Oh, man. There we go. Woo, that's a lot of noise. <laughs> oh, no. You're kidding me. Oh my god, what? Hello? Um... Uh... Sure. Sure. Um, that's a thing. Oh, that's right, I did go in and turn the settings a little bit, so... We'll keep that like that. Actually, it should be fine like that. It's too loud, you guys will let me know. Uh, so... I guess let's hop into it. Uh, we'll go with Hero. Firm. <laughs> I've never seen anime fried chicken and biscuits like that. You sleep softly as the morning suns cast a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. I like the little K-pop group in the background. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school. No time to sleep in. Go o'clock at the window and stay in bed forever. Now nah, we should get up. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Okay. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting the better of you. I should really be there in time, right? I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth equals brushed. Hair equals combed. Hits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. Deodorizing is very important. So is all the other things too. You confidently grab a biscuit straight out the door and head off to class. <laughs> Just what you needed to get the blood flowing. God damn it. God damn it. <sighs> One sec, God. <laughs> it's so cringy, but this is the shit that we watch, right? Or at least to those who watch anime. I don't know. It is what it is. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. You have to say the whole name every time. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever. Uh, Mirami? Mi... Mirami. Okay, Mirami. That's what we'll say. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do voices or not. I'll do voices. Good morning, hero! Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I'm sure I'm excited, a little nervous. Okay, a lot of nervous. What's, what's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic mirror me, raised by MasterChef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you've rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> oh god. But with the University of Cooking School <laughs> Academy for Learning, they say the whole name every fucking time. Famous three day only semester, three day only, what? <laughs> I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Who has a semester for three days? The sweet girl, Mirami, has always had a flair for the dramatic. 
the summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she put, <laughs> put, probably chipped the tooth practicing on a mannequin. Thanks. Ah, uh, give her a pep talk. Honestly. Say your name again for me. Uh, mirror me. I think I might have pronounced it incorrectly. I don't know. That's what I hope, how it sounds like to me. Also, hi, Callie. Of course, you would be the one of the first ones to show up on my return stream. How you doing, friend? Mirror me. Yeah, a little bit. Hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, 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 hi. Let's do pet talk. Remember last month when we saw the fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave us or uh, gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, actually. We'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk to Mirami, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay, after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <laughs> can you believe I cut them myself? You definitely believe it. <laughs> God damn it. I, um... I, I cannot believe it, actually. Before you get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley. Who spells Ashley like that? God damn it. <sighs> it's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. But you can't help but be <laughs> filled with jealousy. You can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Uh, hello, Ashley. <laughs> I don't see. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave here all your <laughs> chicken shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Okay. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. God damn it. See? I knew it. I called that shit. But she actually had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. What kind of voice do we want for Ashley? It'd be like the Sonata voice, I think. Like the ho 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 ho. You cannot defeat me, Archer Rival. That's not how she sounds like to me, but that's how I imagine. A stereotypical sonata would sound. If anyone knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you or, oh, pardon me, we're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look down at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working it out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van! Oh god. You rang. You've never been so sure of <laughs> what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and me and me, but substantially more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would even allow people like you to attend as students. Hmm, I know, right? You think they'd just hand us their diplomas right now? Huh. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off. Do you resist the urge? Let's go, Miriam. Uh. I guess Miriam would be it. I'm saying her name wrong. I know I am. Mir, 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 I am. Miriam. It's Miriam. There we go. Miriam. Whatever. See you, losers, later. 
As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pussing hard against the window directly next to it. I'm um, sorry, what? I don't know if I want to give him a voice. <laughs> hmm. Uh, oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick, kid. I love you! Um, I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Papa. He's old. Could someone like this actually be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Uh, hi, Pop. I'm Hero, so... Are you gonna make me hold the door open all day? Uh, nope. Okay, with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. <sighs> is it just me, or is he kind of cute? <laughs> I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. It wouldn't be complete without, like, an animal teacher. It's trying to fit in as many tropes as possible, I think. Oh, well. No, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup? And why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sparkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What a cute dog. Is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess the dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, the wind begins to rush around you as you swirl. As a swirl of cherry blossoms, petals fill the air inside the classroom. Oh my god. It's so cringe! Chili. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <laughs> He's not a student, god damn it. He's an old man! He's an old man. What voice do we give the colonel, guys? I don't know what voice to give him, though, but we'll keep going. Hmm. <gasps> it's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Arlen... <clears throat> Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, 
Call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmured roll, roll through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisles of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. You're not entirely wrong. Uh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open the window back up before faucet pit smells into a puddle and evaporates entirely. <laughs> Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten class. And what? what's all with the really weird insults? Besides, here, when Hero sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that shimmer. Oh no. Good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. <sighs> this classroom is hot, hot, hot. Oh, this is so cringe. Professor Dog steps into <laughs> Professor Dog steps into settle the class down and sets some ground rules. Hmm. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, and there might even be really adorable tiny food. When it's all said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and completes into the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's arousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. Hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss quiet. Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on a fast track out of here, young man. Are you even sure you're in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school. I was with you as my teacher. I uh, with you as my teacher. Everyone stares blankly. There's always the one character no one remembers. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. That tardiness is unacceptable. Woof. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to the student Sprinkles is referring to, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Burr, burr. <laughs> the class burst into laughter. Oh, Crank, you rascal. <sighs> Sprinkles walks into the classroom as everyone stands in silent ups obedience. Uh, when he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? You reach beneath your apron and return it with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide. What has he locked onto it? Oh, of course it's a chicken snack. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for my new star student. The furry professor immediately devours a snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but you pay no mind to them. 
If they wanted to succeed in life, they would have to learn the importance of carrying a range of dog treats flavors on them at all times. This is very true. Settle down, young chefs. Take your sheet, pardon me, take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room, only two options remain. Really? Hey, hero. There's still, a There's still a seat here. It seems no one's claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh, no. What should I... What should I pick? What should I pick? You gotta go with the best friend, right? But there'll be more chances to get up with Colonel Sanders, but like, you gotta back up your, your best friend on the first day. Got him. We move to take a seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders, he's such a magnificent personality, and the seat is open right next to him. If he had sat there, I might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd, ne I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I got three whole days, that's like a lifetime. So you say, but now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Oh my god. As soon as you settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Yay! A quiz about me! This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for a life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. Look at you, Pop. <laughs> That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Okay, easy peasy. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? What food is best for a broken heart? <laughs> Miss Brinkle's a good boy. He's talking dog and he's... <laughs> Best boy! Hell yeah. yeah. You look up to Colonel Sanders, has been watching you tally your score, he's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh god. Hot diggity hero, you just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? 
I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would be so serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room. It tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I wanted to apologize for my tardiness, you see. I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Uh... <laughs> Lunch! 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 He said, Shh. In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh-huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Or that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, the smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. Were the rumors true? This is... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head and it contains a glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. Jesus Christ. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as it say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. <laughs> oh no. I don't know if I can stand this any longer. You should look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude. Nah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case one of those ingredients is, uh, poisoned. <laughs> Got him. Looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger actually has prepared to follow up, but she it suddenly takes a different approach. Huh? Yeah, and I just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry that chicken so tender. See her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. He realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to himself. Oh no. Mm. <laughs> oh, please. Hmm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want to try any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. <laughs> he starts control contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. My fellow cla uh, classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his pocket and his bucket and you sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. 
Facing Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Oh no. Let the rest of the food in your mouth. You focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. Deeper. And deeper. Yes, even deeper still. Until you find it. Could it be? He really did it. How bold. How adventurous to use. Try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that the information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize everyone in the room is consumed by lunch. No one has noticed that you've traveled through space and time. Well, that's good. Oh, there we go. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He sets what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold of you to just come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open up a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Is it? It's just you and me here talking. I kept, I can keep a secret. In fact, I got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've only got two whole days to get to know each other. Or we got two whole days to get to know each other. He clearly is not giving it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Shouldn't learning be fun? Oh. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. He can feel his warm breath as he whispers, Oh God. There's one ingredient, but I can't tell you. I use... It's something my great-grandmother taught me. <laughs> wow, I never would have guessed. In fact, you're not even sure where you get some if you searched. And definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside standing in the quad. Oh, it's you. Howdy. Maybe I should give him a southern accent, right? Because it is Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? That would make sense. Womp. Yeah. 
Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about my own story and will continue on after I graduate. Sounds like you had big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Hiro. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you, friend. We should head back inside, and this, the next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lessons will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients it could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally we get to show our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff? What if I totally blow it? Not gonna blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna yearn or gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we will be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, come on. At least you made a choice. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle the lesson as a team? A team of two? That is me, me and you, if that wasn't clear? Want to be my partner? Aww. Well, sure, hero. I'll prepare a station. Without a partner, Miriam is left standing alone, and two different students quickly take notice. Oh no. Hello, new partner! Or. Hello, new partner! Beep, boop, beep. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not. Being alone forever. Uh, let's do Clink. Sorry, Pop, but I think Muriel would be partnering with Clink today. It's okay. I already ate. Uh, one second, stream.
Sorry about that, guys. Got a phone call. But I'm back. Where were we? Not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school is, even at this juncture. Mike is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. You don't even know the assignment yet. Cynically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. <laughs> Issue? I hardly know you! <laughs> Clank judders and panels and shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own classwork. All right, you two. Today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which this do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Using octopus, your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy, steak sauce it seems easy enough. It's fancy, you don't even need to cook it. It's always been something of a down-home chef. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy. <laughs> I can't say gravy in a southern accent. And gravy. <laughs> and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face <laughs> to go beet red, embarrassed, and quickly turn away. Oh, go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect uh, produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. Hmm. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does somebody have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. <laughs> Yo, what? Is that his music? Why is this actually kind of good? Did somebody call for me? Uh, no, geez, Van Van. I'm over here crushing heroes' dreams and you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. What's the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. How are we working? In a quartet instead of a duet now. Aww. Actually, no. It looked like Hero was struggling, so we offered to give him a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> I doubt it, though. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever Colonel Sanders' ability to contact or to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has propositions itself at your station. Don't feel, uh, don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick, if that makes sense. 
Nothing about this makes sen any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for the colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks. Your time and need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who has your back. I don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm here to learn to express myself via my cuisine. My cuisine, that bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect that format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair arrangements. Uh, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Hero as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither you, neither of you has Hero's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defeated by Colonel Sanders leaves you feel, uh, sorry, leaving, being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. This music is really intense. You look for sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion has guided you through the steps and you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat. Oh, wow. Out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would have been very proud. Colonel Sanders, hold the spork out to you. God damn it! <laughs> I can't take it seriously. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. <laughs> what? Your eyes lock. The most, the moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love some, better free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. You like sporks in this one. I guess that might be like a KFC thing. Do you have a lot of sporks there? I don't know. I don't eat there. When you see, when you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage without thinking, you fling a sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Oh, what did you do that for? Fan fan, do something. Scooping up a fling full van van tasted dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious, horrified by this revelation. He slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on, right there, hero. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you be <laughs> both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato space? Oh no. <laughs> Van Van rushes back over, covered dish in his hand. What kind of calamari is that? Mashed potatoes with gravy? <laughs> Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. 
Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus with my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe bladed forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who, <laughs> who will have the first bite. And you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of the signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. It may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It had been eaten. It had been eaten. I, uh, left something in the oven. I... I don't feel good. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it killed him! <laughs> Oops, it tastes like poison. Class bell rings, <laughs> disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against the poisons of all kind. I'm not sure the professor here makes enough money. <laughs> Um, hello, I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry I had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What, like, for real? Oh, come on. At night, the school building has taken another vibe entirely. It's dark, and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skill. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Facing them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. That might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. What? But I'm not! Colonel Sanders? Yes, hero? There's something I need to tell you. God damn it. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was a boy, I had a dream that one day I could be the greatest chef the world had ever seen. That is a JoJo pose. That's a motherfucking JoJo reference. And every day... I have been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them wishes floating on a shooting star. <laughs> God damn it. Now that you said joke, I can't get it out of my head now. Also, what up, Christine? How you doing, friend? Been a while. Ooh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up. I'm the one here saying inspirational stuff and being a star of the story. Are we forgetting that you're cooking to literally kill the guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. 
Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> I'm doing better, Christine. Thank you for asking. I've been on road to recovery, but I'm, I think I'm in a place where I can stream now without it killing me. So that's good. Uh, forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Actually, I'm the hero. Spork monster. What the fuck? The spork monster is here to fight a hero. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. I think I left the fridge open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me, just as I'm letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because uh, I'm a monster, see? <sighs> Is he trying to rhyme on purpose, or was that just coincidence? Before you can discuss syntax any further, Man, a spork monster, my mom only lets me fight this fight spoons. It's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? The oh, fuck? <laughs> Gotta attack, buddy! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. <laughs> I wanna use my clap cheeks attack. Oh what the fuck? Cook of Love does one damage. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. He spit hot gravy at you. Ugh. Take one damage. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and larger, more intimidating. How we respond? I'm gonna defend. Trepidation? Okay. You hold your head between your hands and mutter, This is not happening. This is not happening. <laughs> Spork Monster is no quieter, buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. It's not if it's a popcorn chicken bowl. It's not. Popcorn chicken bowl would have been a much better monster. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is gonna have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares his ultimate attack, rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders has had the southern accent in this for me. Because, you know, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. <laughs> With a pop pie punch. A pop pie punch does 10 damage. Fork Monster is defeated. I can't take this seriously. <sighs> you, you saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy. Finish him! No student will ever walk the quad in fear again. You'll never survive my student debt loan destruction. I thought I was playing a protagonist, not Bernie Sanders. Oh my goodness. You continue to surprise me, hero. 
The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's much more. It's like a Necronomicon. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken as the cover. You open the cover to find a library card tucked inside. The last name you have signed it out is Borgo. Hmm. Borgo. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in 